Karsten, please continue. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, so <clears throat> I essentially said that there are some 13 uh, issues that are still open, but uh, actually many of these are uh, marked with um, SDF Next or SDF uh, Evolution. Uh, one is marked with waiting for tool update, and I still need to, to get to that. There are a couple more tasks we want to do at the end. And uh, maybe we should go through the rest of the uh, the items. So if uh, anybody wants to share the issues uh, page, as usual, I'm a bit slow in sharing things. So give me a second here. Okay. Need to clear up the screen a bit. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> okay, maybe we want to start uh, oldest uh, first. Um, so um, I think we can look at 56 and 62, which are essentially just the same two sides of the same uh, issue. And uh, we actually have a PR for those. Um, but the PR currently only has changes to the CDDL and not the changes to the text, if I see this correctly. So I think this just needs to be completed. Wait, well, actually, yeah, um, I adjusted the tables, I think, in the markdown file, but yeah, the, the text needs to be updated as well, I think. Yeah, I think there are also a few nits in the CDDL as well. Yeah, I um, try to refactor some definitions. I'm not sure if, if that's uh, desirable or make makes sense. Well, that, that, that's fine, but you you sh simply should run the CDL tool against the playground. Oh models. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if that breaks almost everywhere, then you know that you made a mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, you did run it already, and no, that, but so. I okay. can. I, I expect them to break. Okay. <laughs> but I, I didn't take the time to look exactly where it breaks. Okay. Yeah. Then I, yeah, I, uh, I run it and then I fix it fully. Mm -hmm. uh... Right. Um, so so re regarding the uh, updates to the text itself, um, so did I hear correctly, Jan, that you're, you're planning to do that too? Uh, sure, I can do it. I'm not, yeah, maybe we should discuss what should go in there, maybe. Mm. Um, I wasn't exactly sure about that. Yeah, but that 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 that's very good. And should, and should we have it? I guess we should have it in the same PR, so they can't they go together uh, when we when we merge them. Um, I would expect probably something where we describe the general structure. We should add add a, a sentence, you know, along the lines that like yeah, these are very similar, but the key difference is that 
you further you don't further nest when it's an object. So and, and then we could add there the rationale that then these the object can be these you know atomic components. Yeah, not exactly atomic, but the leaves in in the tree. Yeah, or let's say yeah, let's say reusable components maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because they have still quarks and and others <laughs> inside. <laughs> I think something like that would be good. But, but I guess the question, do, do, do you want to take a first stab at that and we then review it or what is uh, it? Yeah, sure. I, I will uh, add something to the to the PR and yeah, then I would ping you for review. Awesome, um, thanks. Yeah, I think um, that can probably uh, take place offline, I guess, or would you say that this should be discussed in a further meeting. Probably not, right? Yeah, maybe we can yeah. do that at the, do that discussion at the end, mm. uh, depending on how much we have piled up. Then, but we sure can do this one offline. Yes. And thank you for the command line uh, magic spells in the chat, Carsten. Yeah, sorry, um, I need to put it somewhere where the new lines get preserved. I don't know how to do this. Uh, I, I'll send it to you in Telegram. Oh, yeah, I, I uh, already copied it. In, in, uh, yeah, but you have to add the new lines in the right places. And it's oh, OK, see. see. OK, thank you. Okay, now you have it in Telegram. Okay, so um, I think we want, we know what we do want to do with the one pull request we have and the two issues that this is uh, supposed to close. So maybe we can go back to the issues list. So, um, yeah, the examples, uh, in number 60, who writes those examples? There's a little button, assign yourself, that any of you can press. I'm reading this. I, I, I will sign up to do that. Great, please. Oh, I just try, I don't quite understand what, where it is, but I can, um, let's see. Oh, continue from 45. I can go look at that. Yeah. I think I know what that is. Yeah, I think it, it's really just uh, <clears throat> a matter of taste looking whether we can shoehorn this into the existing examples or actually need to, to add an example. And of course we don't have to, to put an example for every single case that is possible. Great, thank you. Let's go to the next. So that was uh, 60 and uh, we have an a Zaini there, and, and Jan is a Zaini implicitly because he, he wrote the pull request. Um, then 63 is editorial and designed to me. Oh, too bad. I didn't notice that. So I'll do that. Then one, one quick comment. Talk about examples. I realize we don't have any example of a thing in the spec. Probably one would be very useful. Yes. So, yeah, I oh, could uh, I just... add that to the to the PR as well. Awesome, thank you, Jan. I was afraid <laughs> for a welcome. while I just assigned myself, but thank you. And I'll be happy to review it. <laughs> oh yeah, you reckon? I would just add uh, that as a comment as well, right? Yes, please.
I don't know if you want to have both seeing an object in the same or, or some some appropriate. Yeah, it probably needs to be a slightly larger example, and uh, we may want to consider putting this into an appendix. Yeah. A thing with two objects nested in it or something like that would probably be like a minimum. Uh -oh. But 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 the thing with one thing and one object, right? Yeah, yeah, say right. In the example that you cannot it's grow from better. first things on the <laughs> object. It illustrates the nesting yeah, of things and the non-nesting of objects. Yeah. To make it an actual example, you will have to add a couple of properties yeah. as well, yeah. and uh, then you probably want to have an SDF data in there, so you actually <laughs> have to get all the uh, examples, and uh, then we are very happy. Well, starts to sound like the Cadillac model. <laughs> ah, I hope not, but uh, yeah. Good. So that was 63, um, 67, if you can quickly click that. So we, we did um, the, the bulk of the work, uh, which was uh, defining what given names and quality names are. And, and sorry, Ari, for not changing this to different definition names, but th there are more things that are given names by the model author, uh, so uh, I, I didn't f find a better term than given names. Of course, we can still change that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Thanks. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we now have text that excludes uh, colons. Niklas, you had a little list at the end with three items. Yeah, this one. And um, so we... Uh, we have text that excludes the, the colon. And now we just should briefly think about uh, what else we want to say about those names. Uh, for instance, if we, we recommend a certain style that uses alphanumeric and dash, uh, we could also add a recommendation how to convert this into a program programming language code so that there is a common expectation of how um, a property name or, or an action is called in a programming language uh, fragment that is generated from a model. We don't have to do this, but uh, I think it, it would be a good thing to do that. Uh, I think it's very convenient and, and helps people understanding of systems that are being built. And, and um, if there was a convention, I guess people wouldn't have to use it, but it would help to make all models kind of look the same, right? That's, that would also yeah. happen. So is it alphanumeric and dash that we're recommending? We're not really saying anything about camel case or any of that, the ca that capitalization, but really, but what we're saying is, try to use dashes and not underscores and, and dots, periods, right? That's really kind of what, what it is. Because the alternatives are periods and underscores usually. Yeah, so um, I, I actually have some notes that I have to find that actually has a slightly different end result for given names than for quality names. Let me try to find those. It worked on notes. those already, great. <laughs> Um, because you, um, in one of the two, it actually makes a lot of sense to have, uh, the ability to use a period as, as a structural element, but of course now I don't find it anymore. Uh, I think, and I also have models in the given names. There are dots already. I, I have found, the yeah, and I have found dot to be something that um adds to the readability in many cases of what you're doing so it adds to the understandability i should say readability is probably a little worse but understandability is better When you want to show that part of the name is actually a sub part, 
and represents a component or something like that, the dot is very helpful. And dash doesn't really say that. Yeah, so I think I can uh, take that uh, item um, and then I can search offline uh, what I had uh, written down for that and, and ask the question on the mailing list. But we don't want to mandate things here, right? Or, or... Right, this is, this is just a recommendation yeah. in your list. So what you wrote on March 14th is recommend. Do we want to make any more additions to that? Uh... Yeah, maybe you want to make a note that for, there's a difference for quality and given names on that. Uh, bullet. Yeah. And by the way, this reminds me of a one small thing. Um, of course, often if the given name is already very readable, then you don't necessarily need uh, need to have the label. Yes. The, 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 so maybe we could actually <laughs> need to formalize that, that like if the label is lacking, you know, use the given name where you would use label. And then also write in the recommendation that if you are really tempted to use funk, funky characters, in the given name, you should probably put them into label. So it kind of works works both ways. I wonder what is the right word for funky in a specification. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure Karsten has the right word for it. <laughs> I think it's very no, good. No, 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 merit, or... <laughs> yeah, we, of course, th there is an internationalization issue here. Um, I, I remember <laughs> talking to some developers uh, from Norway at some point, and uh, they were trying to write a web application uh, that dealt with their tax system. And while writing the application, they were trying to use English language uh, uh variable names and so on and the problem is their text system is defined in norwegian and, and nobody has defined in the, the canonical english language terms for for the norwegian <clears throat> items <laughs> in there so at some point they gave up and decided that everything that is specific to the text system will be written in norwegian and then of course uh, you are beyond asking <laughs> It, at uh, Smart Things, we used label to drive the whole internationalization system. So label is a thing that is picked up by the uh, by the different language. So we wanted to not have developers to have to do all the translation. We wanted to be able to go to online yeah. dictionaries and higher services and stuff like that. So we used label, and it actually worked out pretty good. The text hook. In the definition, if you're writing a, a new model for smart things for a new device and and you just put label and you put your English text in label and you use English text, you know, careful to use it that you have to have a little knowledge of how these services work and what have you. But um, it worked out pretty well and there was a little bit of cleanup needed on, you know, there was some review needed. So still a human review was needed. You couldn't just trust that everything always happened right. But um, yeah, that was another use of label was for internationalization. I don't know if we want to have a, a an official story for that. Maybe SDF next. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I would consider it likely that at some point we will have uh, something like label colon en dash us. Yeah. And uh, then people can fill in this stuff using mapping files. 
Yeah, that that's that's exactly the workflow we have at Smart had at Smart. Well, mm. have had I had yeah. they have. Yeah. Maybe that that's a good point. Um, do we want to do a quick consideration, like that we have the right extension point for the internationalization in this version, that we can do it easily in the in the next version? Because I I guess like the way they do it in the web of things is that you can have um, either a literal string when it's, and then it's English, or you can have a, a map that has from the uh, code, I mean, the country or the language codes into specific descriptions, but they are using the same quality for both. Um, yeah. If we want to later use that form, do we need to have something here that takes that into account? Or if we simply use a new quality for the internationalized versions, then I guess we are future proof because you know the current version uh, parser simply would ignore those international versions. And I guess then then the third option is something what you proposed, Karsten, that you would have a specific quality per language. But I, but I kind of like the map approach, um, even it's already being used and it seems quite quite clean. Um, but the key question is, would we be reusing the same quality or would we have a separate quality for the internationalized versions? Yeah, let me write my example here. Like we're including whole sentences and phrases, not just single words either, if it helps. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I would the internationalized versions would be, you know, potentially multiple sentences, like the whole description. Just that most of the examples just have single terms, and I'm yep. like, no, you can't really tell how it's all going to work with that. Yeah. Mm, yep. Thanks, thanks, Karsten. Yep, that's what I had in mind. Um, and then related to that, maybe I think I really like the thing that what you mentioned, Michael, that the, you had, you know, tooling to do it. <laughs> I think that would be useful to actually have a tool you put there, not in the last version and actually out comes a version with all those machine translated. Yeah, you just tell I it, which, that would be a, which, you give it the list of tags you want and it'll go try to resolve them. And, you know, it does its best, <laughs> but that's, that's how it yeah. works. Good enough. Usually. Yeah. I think that would be hugely useful for a lot of ecosystems that, you know, you could easily internationalize all your models, at least, you know, to some level. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, <clears throat> at some point the, the revolutions uh, per minute uh, become something very different in another language um, and so on. So, yeah, um, yeah but yeah. that's a well known problem. Indeed, and I mean, maybe it's more of a one DM issue where we could potentially do this kind of a uh, service. Well, so that could be a dictionary that gets maintained uh, over that people plug stuff into when they find stuff that's really wrong, you know. And there could be like an overriding exactly. go place you go where you do everything, and then you go here to do the final cleanup. That you know, because that's the, the example I like is that the the high, highest speed on the fan for a fan translated as violent wind <laughs> from, <laughs> from an Asian manufacturer. So it was great. That sounds very descriptive. <laughs> we changed that for English and made it say I and I or something like that. But we had to go in and manually patch that. We don't want to, we don't want the app displaying violent wind. <laughs> Good. I think we have a, an approximate way forward here. So maybe we can go to the next issue. Oh, we're already done. So should we add a issue for the features in STF? Yes. Carson, do you want to give an intro or should I? 
Well, actually, there, there are two different things here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we, we have had our share of discussions about versions. And of course, there, there are versions of specifications of, of models. And uh, there are versions of the SDF uh, specification itself. So versions of the language. And um, I think we, we had enough discussion about the, the letter thing that we decided this really should be mapped to, to features. Um, so it would be good to be able to say in a model which SDF features this model requires uh, to be understood correctly. And that would be something that could go into the um, info box uh, <clears throat> as another item. And then uh, we, we just have to decide, do we only do this for required features or uh, do we also uh, put some uh, way in there to talk about elective uh, features? Uh, so best best when used with feature X, but it still works without feature X. Yeah, and there are also, of course, feature dependencies where when you add a feature, it may depend on other features that somehow have to get accounted for in the system also. Yeah, but the, are the d dependencies visible in the set of features you put into an actual model? I was just wondering if you wanted feature A and you wanted feature C and it depended on feature A, um, then you might have to say you want feature A and feature C, but maybe that's not, that's what I mean by visible, right? So you really just want feature C, but it also depends on this other thing, just kind of like libraries, you know, programming libraries. Um, wouldn't you have a situation like that? Or maybe I don't quite, maybe I'm imagining something that isn't actually happening. But if you have a critical feature and that critical feature has a dependency, then you you have that dependency implicitly. Is there a point in making that explicit? Yeah. I guess I'm so. Not sure about that. But if you if you make if you don't make it if you don't require it to make it expli uh, explicit, then basically you can change the underlying dependencies without changing the. Uh, if you don't, if you don't need to list all the features you need, uh, i.e., there's some kind of some features contain other features basically, then that simplifies refactoring that features list, like command lines kind of and list. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it would shorten things up. Uh, not a big deal. I just wanted. I just it just occurred to me um, something that. Um... Yeah, but I think we're talking about different kinds of features here. Um, so that's maybe the the hardest part of of getting this um, issue well defined and and resolved. Um, because uh, again, we we have it at the language level. We have it at the model uh, level, and um, of course, if you have uh, a product line that has a number of features that are interdependent, so you, you can't have the advanced graphical user interface uh, without the basic graphical user interface also being present or something like that. Um, th that, of course, becomes uh, complicated, and that's something that we would actually have to model in, in our uh, modeling language. But this is unrelated to the question what features of the language does a specific model uh, use in order to express the model? And for that, I think we can do this in a pretty basic way. Mm. Uh, I had a quick discussion about with Ari before this, and one thing that, and, and I'm not I don't saying I, it, it is a problem, but is there a potential problem with, with namespaces in the sense that if you suddenly start bringing in bits and pieces from other models, potentially defined using other feature sets. 
that you somehow need to inherit these features as well. Well, we definitely definitely want to use namespaces for features. I, I completely agree with that. Um, the question is, what does the the name <clears throat> actually mean if it references another model? Aren't you really importing that model instead of importing features? I mean, say that I I, I have a feature. <laughs> This is a whiteboard example. Uh, say that I have a, I want to pull something in from another model using namespaces, right? And that thing in that other model is then uses some feature, yeah, uh, which is defined in that model's uh, features list. Uh, how does my main model, so to speak, that still needs to sort of understand the SDF? Uh, understand that feature. Uh, Small meta of programming. Yeah, but some... Small meta of programming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if 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 you have a way to to uh, reference a piece of specification in a different model, uh, then uh, apparently to to uh, obviously. Uh, in order to use that, you have to have that other model in your hands. And yes. um, maybe importing something from a model means that you also require the, the features there. Yeah, so there, there's some kind of processing. When I pull this thing in with by pointing to its namespace, so the, um, when I pull this other model thing in, I also check that model's features list, and if there is any, if there are any new uh, features there that I don't have already, I will also kind of include them. Can I check something quickly? And when you say uh, feature list and feature set, are are you? Um, uh, does each feature live in its own namespace, or is the feature tagged by having a namespace and then some kind of predicate on that? Right now, the feature has a name, so that yeah. could be it could be in the pre namespace or yeah, sorry, or in the, the predefined namespace or in a namespace uh, that is uh, defined using the namespaces block. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, to make fast progress here i guess there, there's two parts to it one is the since we don't have any features defined yet uh, the, then for the upcoming rfc probably should say something about the feature field if you find something there probably it's an error because as of today you shouldn't find anything there and and then the second part would be define all these nuances like how do you handle actually the features there but for the rfc i guess we need to say something about that specific quality in the info block Basically okay. around if it's not if, so it's, not, if it's not empty you you if it's not empty probably you should throw an error <laughs> and then for the future so, specs we'll say if the contents are x do do y. It's another item in the info block. I didn't I didn't catch that. I guess I missed a document or something. <laughs> okay, cool. And and but also I, I'm not sure if the spec already says that, but maybe we should we should say that if you encounter a quality you don't recognize you ignore it uh, silently so we can also have this non-mandatory to implement uh qualities for example the namespace things easily yeah, except that you sometimes need uh, qualities that you cannot silently ignore yeah and then you would put those into the feature well, i mean some piece of information about those into the feature tag Okay. That's how I, I would envision. Yeah, sounds good. Do you have an example document yet that does some of this? Mm, not not yet, but I think okay. like for example, maybe the maybe the relations might be that kind of thing. 
Um, I guess I mean that like syntactically and structurally how it looks in the document and having a little hard time visualizing ah, all the, all the, I, all I, the I, yeah. Okay, let, let, let me do an issue right away on that and I can write what I envision in my right. head. I, I, I actually really strongly support that way of managing evolution. If we can figure out how to do it, you know, that's definitely how I think we should do it for both the language and especially for models, really, but actually especially for both, where, where models need to be uh, able to be mashed up, for lack of a better word, or composed, then this actually adds a, uh, some semantic composability that was missing before. Is there an idea that you'd eventually roll up all the mandatory features during the evolutionary path and create a new sort of minted version that includes them, or would you just keep? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, it's just a feature that looks like a version number. So you, you just yeah. Yeah. say feature 2.0, and 2.0 implies certain things that you want to so, be. So in it works with it, it works with semantic versioning. If you have a semantic versioning filter, that this will will. It'll, yes, you just need to add to that. Cool. But of course, the funny thing about semantic versioning is that the the minor uh, revisions cannot contain new critical features. So <laughs> only the the major version number can be a feature in in the sense that uh, we are discussing it here. Yeah, and really with with really with features, you're trying to sort of work around that and be a little more flexible. So it might, yeah, right. Semantic versioning, if you had to adhere to it rigidly, might might kind of prevent you from realizing all the benefit of the feature matrix system. Yeah. So now now you see on the on the screen kind of the drawing on a back of an envelope. Feature. So you would have a new quality called features, and that it's an array of uh, identifiers for features that this STF model file is using. And if you find there's something you don't recognize, you throw an error. Don't you want to be able to use the namespace here in this, and when you name these? Yeah. So you in in indeed. Of, we need to cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That could be part of yeah. the example because then you say, oh, but that's in a. So my processor has to look for a namespace first, which it probably already does, being sensible. I want to use more stuff in the info block. Yeah. I mean, I have a processor that could, could deal with SDF ref in the info block, for example. <laughs> yeah, and then a, a related thing, maybe we want to even support having URIs there. Um, so if, well, if you have some private uh, private feature that you don't usual, you you don't write URIs in your references, you write them into the namespace section. True, true. Though yeah curious would be the way to go. But if, but but on the other hand also I think we want to have a registry uh, for those short, shorter yes. IDs. Yeah that's what I was gonna Oh, oh, for the shorter IDs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I guess those, and that the registry would be simply, you know, spec required. Um, or maybe even first come first serve, but I guess it would be most useful to be able to have a spec uh, for each uh, yeah. feature indication. Thanks, Karsten. Yep. 
and maybe maybe now is an appropriate question. Are there any other extension points that we need to have in the base spec? Because maybe that was one that was missing. Carson, the latest one, I can, can you elaborate on that? The special treatment? If a feature is uh, called 2.0, uh, then it's meant to be a semantic version. Ah, okay, of, of the SDF specification. Yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. So at some point we can simply say features 2.0 and, and uh, don't need to enumerate all the features that this includes. Right. Yeah. So, so um, sounds very good. Are we going to? Can, can, can you add that to the com? Uh, sorry. sorry. Can, can can you, Carsten, add that to the comment? I think that would be very good. I already did. Ah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to add. Are we going to relax our thing about plurals and names because it it just seems to be like more natural to pluralize some of the names that it doesn't really matter. You know, I I've, I've been not doing it because it's you know. So you have features and 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 as a plural. Where's our convention that been for something like feature? But it, 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 you know, if you have uh, if you have an array of things, it's uh, pretty natural to have a. It is. It is. For that. Except when you when you flatten that out, you end up with features A, features B, features C instead of feature A, feature B, feature C. But um, I always I always see them flattened, and and it, the, the plural then is sort of extra. But it doesn't really matter. So um, well, if you flatten, then you probably also should change the name. Hmm. But that's a relation when you flatten them. That becomes relation tag, so you don't want to just arbitrarily sort of munch those. Anyway. No, the, the the word feature should be singularized, but uh, the word relationships is still the name of the feature because you yeah, can do that right. more more than once in in the uh, model. Yeah, right. I updated right. the oh, okay. I updated the quality to say feature now. Thanks. Okay, cool. Oh, you just did the opposite of what we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. We have more business to do, so let's not get stuck on this. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've captured it with my style plural question mark, and uh, uh, let's all think about this and add comments to this issue. So well, I still have one question. Um, do we actually want to define a feature for 1.2? So if, if you see an SDF model and uh, it, it uses the feature 1.2, you know that somebody has done the work to clean this up. Well, it would prime the system for one thing. In other words, it would give give you some, an implementation something to look for, and it would also um, establish the pattern that we just talked about. If we're going to do that, we could we could start off that way. I would be maybe is then the field where you where we give the uh, the quality that identifies the uh, uh, the version of the language, also. SDF colon 1.2. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. Then the version is the, mm. model, the model version. Yeah. I mean, I, I I would actually be keen on not doing that, uh, especially that then all the existing models are valid without that field. They are um, certainly valid. Uh, but yeah, but, would... but like, let's say proper. <laughs> <laughs> proper. Yeah. yeah. Because I I think I think what would make sense to say in the RFC that if you find here anything, 
you know, it's, it's an error. <laughs> yep. Oh, and don't really use it until the next version of SDS. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, or, or let's say whatever extension specs we come up with, but like this RFC would be, you would have it empty and you can then omit it completely. Yeah, yeah, we're not actually starting to use it right now. We're we're not going to start using it until the next version of SDS, and that's yeah. when we would start it off. That then we would prime it. I get it. We have ten minutes left. Mm -hmm. the sorry, I was sorry. I sound out for two seconds here. What was the conclusion on the that last point? Uh, or do we need to? The conclusion was what I wrote two minutes ago that no features are defined for STF 1.2. Okay. Perfect. Good. And I guess the key, key, key question uh, who, who's going to make the PR and who's going to review it? Uh, I can volunteer reviewing. Well, I think I kind of wrote half the spec, but, <laughs> but like actually the, the pros. Needs to be written too. So I can write that thing. Awesome. Thanks. And I, yep. And I, let, ping me when, when you have a 0 0.1 and I'll, I'll be happy to review. Yeah, I will just generate a draft pull request and then we can take it from there. Perfect. Thanks. So we, we have uh, eight minutes left. Shall we quickly talk about what we'll do next? Sounds good. Um, I mean, obviously we have a couple of issues that are still open uh, that will, I think, if I remember correctly, I think then with them, if we sort these issues out, uh, the ones we discussed and so on, then we are done with the R, with the contents of the RST or the, the, the draft before working group last call. Yeah. Uh, you are, are outstanding. What do we have left in the, in between now and the working group last call on, of these issues? It's not obvious. Is there, is there a tag that shows that or are they? No, maybe we should have that. Like a 1.2 tag or whatever we're going to call it, or 1.2. Well, everything that, that doesn't have the 1.next tag has a 1.2 tag. Well, uh, yeah, there is also the SDF evolution thing. So let me just add a 1.next tag there as well. All right. And so the remaining ones that that they're all they're all they're all actually required to be resolved before yes. we yeah okay. Well, the line breaking, for instance, if we don't do it now, the the ISG will <laughs> make us do it. So we might as well do it now. But okay. Um, for the outstanding work, how long will it take to? Sh should we have, have a have our next meeting, Mister? Yeah. Yeah, should should we do the next next week the same slot, or do we need to? Uh, next well, week. Okay, in two in two, in two we in two weeks we have the digital twin meeting. Oh, by the way, I, I wonder if everyone everyone saw that announcement on the Think Thing Research Group list. So on the Wednesday fourth of May, uh, we have the Think Thing RG digital twins, uh, working meeting. And as we discussed in one of the early one DM meetings, I think it would be great to uh, present the kind of what, what we have with, with SDF uh, that is relevant for digital twins there. And I guess, Michael, you had already been working on, on that topic, right? Yeah, I, I have. And um, I wanted, I'll follow up with you on what 
the next steps are for me to prepare for this. Cool. Now let, let's let's take that over over Telegram. Uh, but would would it make sense to take a meeting next Wednesday or the yes, Monday please. thereafter? Yep. Next Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's I will call for a meeting next. Same slot. Same. Same bad time. Same bad people. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything? Uh, anything else then, or or or? Uh... Well, maybe I can ask a, a little bike shedding question. How do you want your line breaking to be done? Sorry. What are the options? Well, the options are, there is actually an RFC for how to do line breaking in RFCs. We could use that. Um, or we could uh, do extensive manual arrangement into 70 columns. Yeah, and, and, can, and can we have it in, in a way that in the HTML version, it looks nice? But in the text version, it does whatever needs to be done. Can you write a message to RFC interest that suggests that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now, if the, there's an easy... the, yeah. the uh, people who are guarding the V3 spec are very, very uh, against, very much against doing anything that treats text and then html and pdf uh, different and that's a source of problems and uh, yeah but it, it needs to be done for the text version so uh, we might as well do it in a way that that uh, is acceptable in the html version as well i think the the json schema org generator that i'm using generates uh, json schema org that doesn't require line breaking uh, but the CDDL certainly does, and uh, also I'm not sure that all of our examples are uh, nicely broken and <laughs> broken. Hmm. Well, actually, in, in, interesting question because I mean, it would be great if the CDDL was such that I can simply copy paste it to a CDDL tool. Yes. So is there? But that that sounds like you need a CDDL compatible line break. Yes. Is there one? Well, yeah, of course you can manually shift things around until you are within 70 columns. It just means that the file becomes so much longer. Oh. And of course you can use RFC, what was it, F8971 or something, but then you actually need a tool to unbreak the stuff. No, it wasn't 8971, but... Uh... Okay, but sounds a, a bit more complicated topic than maybe yeah. we realized. <laughs> Surprise. 8792 is the... <clears throat> RFC. So, uh, those of you interested in arcane editorial issues can look in 8792. Sounds like good stuff to read before you go to bed, right? <laughs> well, it's best read in bed. So, you don't, when you fall asleep, you don't hit the furniture yeah. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Since I have an example uh, assigned to me, I'll I'll probably just keep it under seventy columns. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the CDDL is the main problem, and uh, we, we certainly can manually fix that. Okay, thirty seconds left. Thank you, guys. I think. Thank you. All. Talk to you next yeah. week with ho hopefully most of the assigned items actually done. Yeah. yeah, but thank thank you. Good progress. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, bye. Bye. bye.